After the ending of chapter 1092, 1093 started with the awakened ancient giant robots. Ha, <laughs> who are we kidding? This is Oda we're talking about. The man's cliffhangers have cliffhangers. So of course we didn't see the continuation of that crazy development. Which more than anything is suspect timing. Because that's likely Oda's way of showing us that because the robot is most likely what will be playing a big role in how this arc ends, as of now, it's not time yet to reveal all its secrets. But we did still get a continuation of the last chapter with with Luffy turning into his giant form via his Gear 5th abilities, and his fight with Kizaru continues with all the cartoonish Gear 5th elements that come with it. Although in saying that, the cartoonish goofiness hasn't quite extended to Kizaru as we've seen in the past with Luffy's other opponents, or at least for now. The Admiral remains as calm as always this chapter, which makes me wonder if this could also be the start of us gradually moving away from Luffy's Gear 5th form, always being so comical to introduce more tension. In which case, I think this is a good move, considering who we we anticipate to be his opponents in the battles to come. With the likes of Akainu and Blackbeard being our opponents in future story developments, Luffy has a personal dramatic stake in defeating both of these characters due to their respective roles in his loss of his brother Ace, and so having a more serious tone to their battles would be more appropriate so that the fights feel more dramatic than Luffy just simply goofing around. Not to say that these battles in the future will be 100% serious, because that's also just not the style of One Piece, and it is a satisfying image to picture Luffy Luffy wildly spinning a bewildered Akainu like he did with Kizaru just recently. But you get what I mean. We need more tension to make it a more engaging story. And I think we're heading in the right direction here with this fight as a nice balance of the comedic elements while not making Kizaru a total victim to the goofiness of Luffy's gift. Kizaru it. largely remains the same as he always has and generally unfazed. And yet Luffy versus Kizaru is also turning out to be a very fun battle with a lot of fun bits in their clash. Also, if I remember correctly, this may be the most time that we've spent in an airborne fight that we've seen in the series so far. Something that's hard not to mention, of course, is the fact that Luffy is taking on an Admiral one-on-one -on -one, and that the result of this match is still a large question mark. And so this development takes you back to the days where Luffy was an unfortunate, underwhelming underdog against far bigger threats such as the Admirals. Marineford obviously stands out as one of these often moments as well as our Bodhi, where Kizaru was the main obstacle in Luffy's way and was back then just able to kick Luffy around with absolutely no possibility for him or his crew to fend off such an overwhelming presence. Yet right now, here we are. And although Kizaru has been impacted for some comedic effects, such as, again, that childish spinning, like I mentioned earlier, for the most part, Kizaru still remains that carefree and that nonchalant vibe in which he carries himself. But he is at least being shown to use more of his abilities, some of which we've never seen before, which is proof of him needing to reach into his bag and actually put in some effort to fight Luffy. And because in my opinion, Kizaru's abilities translates really well into the anime, I can't help but be very excited to see all those new moves that we saw in this chapter become animated. Especially that one where he tries to stop himself from landing in the ocean, so he breaks apart into particles, and then used his own shadow clone jutsu all in very quick succession, which was a very fun sequence to witness, and a great callback moment for Luffy to refer to it as a hollow ghost. I like Luffy had them all lined up to to stamp through all of them at once, but because I am such a big sound effects girl, it felt like I was missing the complete experience of these action sequences because it's hard to perfectly imagine on what sort of sound to connect them to in my head. But in any case, it was fun seeing Luffy tactically get rid of them all at once. And as for Luffy's fighting, firstly, it's always cool to see our protagonist add new attacks to his arsenal, and his name for these attacks being Booming Dawn is quite meta, given that Luffy himself probably doesn't associate himself with the new dawn or is aware of his sun theme but in any case they were physically very cool attacks and i'd equally like to see them animated but mostly i like that luffy's gear fifth hasn't turned out to be luffy's version of popeyes after eating spinach wherein as soon as luffy activates this form it guarantees him an easier path to victory right now it still feels like a power that he very much needs to get used to and use wisely not only because of its effect on his own stamina but overall it's just not a sure proof way of defeating strong opponents automatically. It made sense for him to gain the upper hand and have an easier time with Kaido back at Wano because when Luffy activated Gear 5 it was near the end of their battle when Kaido was also close to his limit or at least not as fresh as Kizaru currently is against Luffy since Kaido was also more of a physical brute style fighter who takes on and gives back physical blows in their fight. But here we see that Kizaru has way more tricks up his sleeve due to the nature of his devil fruit which creates a very different style of fighting that we witnessed at Onigiri 
Higashima, and so I'm looking to see more of it. But I can't help but get the feeling that this main clash between the Yonko and Admiral will not have an actual victor here at Egghead, and the arc will actually end with the Straw Hats escaping, which we will talk more about later. The fact that Kizaru still doesn't seem like he's going all out yet does raise a lot of interesting questions about his characterization. Is it really a showcase that Luffy has quite a way to go before reaching Kizaru's status in terms of strength and abilities? Is it more of a demonstration about Kizaru's lazy justice full on show and he just can't be bothered to put up a full on fight? Or are his morals and his own brand of justice a lot more complex and deeper than we realize where he truly doesn't actually want to kill Vegapunk or the Straw Hats? Although we did get teases of his backstory as we also witnessed Sentomaru's in previous chapters, I have a feeling that this is a character that we're going to delve into a little bit deeper in the chapters to come. But continuing with the action, with Luffy taking on Kizaru, this leaves Zoro to handle Luchi, which I have to add is another one of those holy crap, look how far we've come type of moments. Given the last time that these two fought, which you couldn't even call a fight because that was a one-sided beatdown at the hands of Luchi, now Zoro is so confident, he thinks that this is a matter that the captain shouldn't concern himself with. And that has to be one of the most low-key badass lines I've ever heard that puts Zoro in a great position while also elevating Luffy at the same time. It makes Zoro and his confidence look so cool, which then says even more about the respect that he has for Luffy. Because a man as cool as this recognizes and submits himself to Luffy. Ah, have I mentioned that the Straw Hats are my favorite character? And if you love the Straw Hats as well, then make sure to give your girl a subscribe because we've got a new challenge to get this channel up to 100k by the end of the year and I would most appreciate your help. But this matchup seems to have started in their peak form, signifying that both Zoro and Luchi are taking the others seriously from the get-go, with Luchi in his awakened form and Zoro's flames around his swords, indicating that he's in his King of Hell state. And so I am very excited to see Zoro get a shot at redemption against Luchi. But with Luffy posing as a force that can actually stand up to Kizaru, and Oda not presenting not too much cause for concern between Zoro and Luchi so far, it does tease whether the tide is about to turn now that Atlas has issued an override command to regain control of the pacifistas, but we know that it's not quite that simple because of the presence of a certain Jay Garcia Saturn. It's a not so subtle comment that whoever controls the pacifista will win this fight before ending the chapter with Saturn's ominous presence. The optimism of the Vegapunks makes it clear that they believe they have the highest rank of authority on the island and that everyone is unaware of Saturn. Luffy and the Straw Hats may even be unaware of the existence of the Gorosei completely. And so while the most obvious action for Saturn to take is to retake control over the pacifistas, thereby turning the tide heavily in his group's favor, it's also highly possible that we may be soon witnessing a full reveal of the mysterious devil fruit of one of the Gorosei. And on the topic of mysteries, Bonnie's real age is an area we do seem to be getting more information about. It's been a topic of constant speculations due to the abilities of her devil fruit. But here, Vegapunk being overly concerned and his overprotective reaction about Bonnie on top of referring to her as a little girl, not to mention Kizaru's comment last chapter, it all really does seem to support the speculation of Bonnie being a younger child than she seems to be physically. So I don't know, what do you think? Is Bonnie being a child almost practically confirmed? Overall, with everything going on, the outcome isn't super clear in terms of how this arc will end, and this chapter only further heightened that feeling of being kept on our toes that I've been getting about Egghead to a whole nother level. Will Luffy and the Straw Hats just beat Kizaru, the CP0, and the Marines along with Saturn as well? Will Saturn take complete control and the pacifistas will end up causing a tragedy for the crew and their allies? Will there be more casualties on top of the Vegapunks that we've already lost this arc? Does the now awakened ancient giant end up becoming the biggest factor for the crew escaping the island? Or will it be Kuma who will arrive to rescue his daughter before using his ability one last time by sending the Alliance away to Elba for a sudden start to a new arc? It's just crazy how we have all of these potential scenarios happening, but no clear indication of one of them being more likely to be the solution or being the ending more so than the others. And because after all, we could also witness an entirely different scenario that we haven't even considered yet. And while it may not be too long before we get an answer to this, because Egghead does seem to be close to its climax, we will at least have to wait a little longer for this to actually eventuate because there will be a break next week. But if you subscribe to this channel, then I will help make that break week void more bearable for you by providing you with more One Piece content. So please subscribe, please like, let me know what you thought of the chapter and what you think where we're heading on Egghead as a comment below. As always, thanks for listening to one of my rambling thoughts and thank you
you to all of our Patreon and channel members for your continued support. This is Joy Girl, and I'll see you again soon.